Whether you're flying VFR or IFR, you're going to get exposed to a form of basic navigational aid called a VOR. VOR stands for VHF Omnidirectional Range. The VHF, in turn, stands for Very High Frequency. This is an overly complicated name, and let's acknowledge something from the start. VORs are overly complicated. We all struggle with understanding them, not because there's anything wrong with us, but because they are not user-friendly navigational aids. It's not you, it's them. So with that out of the way, let's look at what VOR is. This is Salisbury Airport in Maryland. Just north of the runway intersection is a white building that looks like a giant bowling pin. This facility houses the VOR transmitter in the maintenance shed with a bunch of equipment inside of it. This big white transmitter sends signals out in every direction, hence the omnidirectional O in VOR will represent this omnidirectional signal with the 360 degrees of the compass rose, with the arrow pointing towards zero degrees, which is magnetic north. We call this line the 360 radial. Radials radiate out from the station in all 360 degrees. So if this arrow points along the 360 radial, this dashed line represents the 060 radial. The dashed line radiates out from the station pointed 060 degrees. Now, an aircraft can be anywhere in relation to this VOR station, but it will be on one of these 360 radials. This aircraft here, because it's on the dashed line we drew, is on the 060 radial. Now, here's something important to remember about VORs, and so we'll say it a few times. No matter what heading or direction the aircraft is flying, as long as it is on this dashed line, it'll be on the same 060 radial. The aircraft can be flying outbound, can be crabbing into the wind, can be pointed inbound, or can even be moving backwards, and it will still be on the same radial. It's all based on position, not heading or movement. If your aircraft has a VOR receiver on board, it's designed to receive the signal sent from the VOR station and interpret what radial you're on. Here's how the VOR signals work. The transmitter, like the one on the field at Salisbury, sends out two distinct signals. There's a reference signal, represented by the light green here, which is sent out omnidirectionally in all directions. Then there's a variable signal, the blue signal, which is a focused rotating signal. The reference signal in light green is timed to pulse out in all directions when the variable signal in blue is aimed at magnetic north. If your aircraft were on the 360 radial, in other words, you were on that line pointed away from the station towards magnetic north, you would receive both of these signals at the same time. Look at the little aircraft off to the right. It receives the two signals at different times. First, it gets the pulse of the light green reference signal. When this happens, the blue variable signal is aimed at north. After a short time, like a tiny fraction of a second, the blue variable signal rotates around and is received by the aircraft. What the onboard VOR receiver does is time the difference between when the two signals were received. A particular amount of time equates with the aircraft being on a certain radial. The amount of time represented by the red pi diagram equates to the 105 radial. Further around the compass rose clockwise and more time would pass between receiving the one signal and the other. Kind of like an old rotary phone where the bigger numbers would take longer to spin around the dial. And if you get that reference, please don't date yourself by letting us know. Okay, so that's how the VOR receiver can tell which radial we're on. Here's how to use it for navigation. The compass rose we drew is actually depicted on the sectional chart. It's centered on the VOR station itself. Notice that the arrow to zero doesn't point straight vertical as it would to true north, because again, the 360 radial is magnetic north, which is great because we use magnetic for navigation. The sectional chart has an identification box for the VOR. It lists the name of the facility, Salisbury, and the frequency 111.2. This is a VHF frequency, which is where the V in VOR comes from. Up top are communications frequencies to get in touch with flight service. And over here is the Morse identifier, the dots and dashes that make up the three-letter Morse identifier for this station, SBY. In the cockpit, if we tune in the nav to the SBY frequency, 111.2, and turn on the nav on our audio panel, we'll hear these dots and dashes. 
And this is how we know we're tuned to the right station and that it's working. We should always ident the station when we first tune into it. The aircraft will have one or two VOR receivers on it, represented by these dials here. The VOR display shows information about which radial the aircraft is on. First, it's surrounded by a compass card around the outside, very similar to the directional gyro. There's a knob at the bottom called an Omni Bearing Selector, or OBS, another very complicated name, so we can think of it as the knob. When we twist the knob, the compass card will rotate. This is how we can select a radial. The white needle is called the Course Deviation Indicator, CDI. Again, we can just call this the needle. The needle tells us how far off we are from the radial we selected by turning the knob. It can display up to 10 degrees of deviation from the radial. These dots relate to how far off we are. Each dot represents two degrees of deviation. So right now, the needle is fully deflected left, meaning 10 or more degrees of deviation. But as it comes in, each of those dots represent two fewer degrees of deviation. So it'll come off by eight, six, four, two, and finally showing us centered when we're on the selected radial. Notice the edge of the circle or donut there is the first two degrees. Finally, there's an arrow pointing either at to or from. As we twist the knob, the compass card spins around and causes the needle to deflect and the to from flag to flip, all dependent on which radial the aircraft is currently on. To understand all this, let's go back to our plane on the 060 radial of the Salisbury VOR. At first, the compass card has the 180 radial selected. We already know we're on the 060 radial. When we twist the knob to rotate the compass card, when we get to 060, the needle will center and the arrow will point to from. Why from? We've selected this radial and radials radiate out from the station. Look at it another way. If we fly the heading we selected, 060, we'll be flying a path directly away from the station. Here, let's reiterate that it doesn't matter what direction the aircraft is pointed in or moving in, as long as we have the 060 radial selected and we stay on that radial, the needle will stay centered with the from flag indicated. Let's go back to the beginning and look at the mechanics of the display a little bit more. Here, at first, we've selected the 180 radial. Let's draw that radial on our chart here. Now, let's split the chart into two hemispheres, perpendicular to that 180 line we've selected, and we'll have these small slices at the dividing lines. There's a to hemisphere and a from hemisphere. Notice the aircraft is in the to hemisphere and that this is what's indicated on the two flag. What does this mean? It means that if we flew that selected 180 heading, we would be getting closer to the station instead of further away from the station. Okay, so let's go through the same exercise of twisting the knob to select the 060 radial. And while we're twisting it, we'll also move the blue lines and hemispheres that we've charted out. As we start twisting it, the dividing line between the hemispheres approaches our plane. When we get inside the little cone there, the two flag disappears. There's actually no flag up for either to or from. We call this the cone of confusion, but it's not as confusing as you think. When we don't have either the to or from flag showing, we must be on a radial that is 90 degrees off from the one we've selected. Here we've landed on the 150 radial selected, bringing up this cone of confusion, which makes sense because our radial is 060 offset exactly 90 degrees from here. If we keep twisting the knob, we'll end up in the from hemisphere and the from flag will pop up. We'll twist until we're almost selected 060. We're just 10 degrees off. Now what happens is that as we turn the last 10 degrees, the needle will begin to center. As we saw before, it centers when we've selected our radial 060. As we fly out, the needle stays centered as long as, again, we stay on that 060 radial. Now, let's say we get blown off by a little bit of wind to the right side. We're no longer on the 060 radial. That radial is to our left, and so the needle will swing to the left, two degrees, four degrees, six degrees, until where we are now is not the 060 radial, but the 066 radial. These are the basics on what VOR is and how it operates. There's a lot more to explore about actually using VORs in navigation, and that's what's covered in the next VOR video. But hopefully this basis will give you a good foundation of understanding what it is we're dealing with.
If you're not busy right now, why don't you keep your training going by watching some of these videos here? And you can subscribe to stay up to date on all the new releases and training articles that are coming out and more. Head on over to the website, flight-insight.com to really kickstart your flight training.